I'm often asked how does the hero villain game book uh, actually work? What are the rules for it? Uh, and what do the different stats and attributes in the game mean? So today I wanted to um, explain briefly a little bit about how it all works. Now, um, well, some people, some authors write uh, what they call interactive fiction. And of course, my games are also interactive fiction. But I like to think more of as game books. So they have um, a set of attributes and there is a series of game mechanics that will dictate whether you pass a certain test or not. So it's not just that you make choices, but yes, there are also these choices. Um, also look at your attributes, compare them. And if you're, you know, if you, for example, you have a certain strength and you can bash the door, if you don't have that much strength, then you would fail on such a test. Um, Please note also that although I create my game books, I often don't understand them as well as some of the players do. So I like to create mechanics within my games and the mechanics will dictate what happens. So it's not often, I may not necessarily know myself how to best go about something. I don't know sometimes, for, for example, what's the optimum way through, the optimal path through the game if you want to do a certain thing, because what I'm, just creating is a set of rules and then just letting you free to experiment with these with this system as you see fit so i like to think of myself more as a dungeon master or game master rather than an author in a sense now for creating the hero villain series i heavily the game mechanics were heavily inspired by this rpg that i used to play as a kid it's, it was called marvel superheroes and um we played it I played it with my friends. I was, as usual, the game master or judge, as it was called in this system. And we had quite a lot of fun with it. So when I started to create my game, then actually I still had these books at home. So I was going through them and trying to design the system. Of course, it's inspired by it, but it's not the same because I realized that some things didn't work exactly the way I wanted them to work, etc. And I've included many of the mechanics that are commonly found in choice script games, like including the opposing pairs, personality tests, stats, etc. So, yes, it's an adaptation of a system if you want, but um, it can actually help you to get a feel, for those of you at least who like uh, Marvel, uh, and I was always a big Marvel fan, especially X-Men, Spider-Man, um, Avengers, etc. So, then... Um, one of the yes, of course, one of the most important things in the game is actually your, the character creation. In this old RPG, uh, the Marvel superheroes, there was actually you could take the role of one of these heroes that already exist, superheroes. You could take the role of Spider-Man, for example, but you could also create your own character. So I wanted to do this to actually let you create the character that you want to create. I don't want to force people to read a story with a certain set of powers, but rather I'm trying to give you as much freedom as I can to create a character with the powers that you want. And of course, there are limitations to that because there is almost an infinite number of powers that you could Im somebody can imagine, and I had to restrict myself to something uh, that is manageable anyway for the sake of creating game. Of course, with the Hero or Villain Supercharged DLC, I'm expanding again on the amount of powers that you can use. So hopefully there'll, even be, there'll be even more choice in the future. Now, I also understand that many of the players spend a lot of time in the character creation and they find this to be a real fun part of the game. And I'm really happy that you do because this is something that I really wanted people to feel. Um, of course, when you create your hero, you can um, you, the powers that you will create are fairly static. And this is a game a decision. I mean, I can't have people constantly increase the number of powers uh, as they go through the game in the same way that Spider-Man has these powers and pretty much these are fairly static as it goes through life if you want. You might get a bit better at something or not, but but his overall strength is the same. Spider-Man is not the Hulk, hence you expect that he will have a certain amount of strength. So, um, nevertheless, to provide a challenge I like to increase to introduce difficulty settings in my game so actually you have different 
amount of um, you have a, a range of um, hero builds that you can do and um, you have a certain amount of hero points and these points will dictate how many powers you can get uh, at the start if you want to play an easy mode you might you will be able to get a lot of powers and high attributes which will make it very easy to go through the game um, if you go for a harder difficulty setting you'll have less powers and you'll have a weaker hero who will be more likely to fail in certain tests and I wanted to create the sense through my games that uh, it's not necessarily true that each hero can succeed in all parts of the game so as many of you read comic books many times heroes fail so I wanted to create a sense in my games that you cannot always succeed in everything especially if you're playing in normal difficulty sometimes you're going to win some fights all the fights you're going to lose and you're going to have to just pick up yourself back up and continue with the game so anyway in this uh, Marvel RPG system there was this table that was fundamental to the game and of course in this case I have avoided dice rolls because I think um, as per the philosophy of choice of games maybe they're not necessarily a good idea always so but nevertheless the overall system follows this pattern of like um, attributes that go from a 1 to about 100 and heroes should have a maximum of about 100 so you can only have a strength of about 100 but of course in the game system that Marvel created there is further two categories which are for extraterrestrial super strong beings like Galactus or what, whatever it is um, that should be even stronger that's whatever the heroes can um, access now um, I of course I'm contemplating that some some of the characters in my game such as the Delanista will have attributes higher than 100 but generally speaking the players are limited to 100 maximum and what do these mean? Well, the Marvel RPG actually had six different attributes. I've limited to five. And the reason why I've limited to five is because also I've given players um, abilities. The idea, generally speaking, is that these attributes are not going to change much through the game. When you can train something, when you can train an attribute, for example, by spending some time don't know, doing push-ups, you'll most likely just go up by one. Of course, if you get one of the meteorite stones, through the game you can increase by a lot more but what does this strength mean well a strength of about six is considered to be the usual for um, um of six to nine is considered to be average or typical as they call it in the marvel and this is the normal strength of an average human and this means that if you punch somebody essentially you would be doing six points of damage now um with the strength of 10 to 20 you'd be considered strong and you would be able to lift 100 to 150 kilos so the same as if you're going to the gym and training quite substantially 20 to 30 would mean that you're an olympic athlete you'd be able to lift maybe 200 and or 250 kilograms with difficulty anything over 30 in the marvel system is considered to be um superhuman and that is for example where you come into people like spider-man power man iron man etc so, um, yes, uh, maybe 31, with something like 31, you'd be able to lift several tons. And of course, then you go up to hundreds of tons. And of course, the higher level, earthly, which would be something like over 90, would be Hulk, Thor, Wonder Man, etc. Agility, of course, decreased, uh, explains how, quick, how easily you can dodge. It's very important in combat. And your agility is measured against uh, some. Your enemy's ability is measured against your fighting ability when finding out whether you hit them or not. And of course, again, six to nine is considered average of a human. And again, the same idea applies. Ten to twenty would be good. Up to thirty would be an Olympic athlete, and anything above thirty would be considered um, superhuman. Now. For example, this would be something over 30 would be the equivalent maybe of Captain America, Daredevil. Spider-Man would have something like an incredible um, agility as well. And over that you get things like Silver Surfer, Quicksilver, etc. Now, endurance. Um, it reflects the ability, your ability to survive damage. 
And the important thing in the game is that your hit points are calculated by multiplying your endurance by four. Hence, that means that if an average human witch with a strength of six is hitting an average human with an endurance of six, it would take four punches to knock him out. Okay? Again, the same thing. Um, up to 30 would be an Olympic athlete. Um, everything above that would be remarkable. Um, so, in uh, the marble system, it also tells you about um, who can be considered to have um, each of these endurances. And, for example, you can see that somebody like uh, She-Hulk, Power Man, Storm would have an amazing ability. Um, Thing, Wonder Man, Iron Man, Hulk, etc. can take a lot of punishment before being knocked out. Intelligence in this game is also important, especially if you're an inventor. Now in the Marvel RPG game, you are allowed to create things, invent things, and in this game there's also an inventor, an inventor system that allows you to create objects, to manufacture, craft your own objects. At the moment, it's mostly restricted to those who start as, off as inventors, although I might change that in the future and give other characters bigger possibilities to craft and alter the environment. Um, again, same thing. Anything up to 30 would be considered the normal human intelligence. Anything after 30 would be that you're a genius with an IQ of over 150. Anything over uh, over 90 would be that you can invent alien, advanced alien technology. Um, of course, in this game, this intelligence ability is also goes together with engineering and um, alien technology. So actually, many times what you're able to do is a combination of your intelligence, but also your engineering ability or your alien technology ability. So these uh, combine in the case of this of, of um, hero. Psyche, this indicates how strong you are when you're doing mental attacks and how easy it is for you to resist mental attacks. Again, somebody which has a range of 20 to 30 would be stubborn and very strong-willed. According to my wife, I'm quite stubborn, so I guess maybe that's what I am at, somewhere around 20 to 30. Although I do hope sometimes I, I listen to readers and I do try to improve my games with the feedback that I get from all of you because I think actually you provide amazing feedback and my games have only grown due to the suggestions that people have made. Um, something over 90 is invulnerable to mental attacks and you can, ha you can see here, for example, Wolverine, is very di it's very difficult to, to you know, uh, take mental control over Wolverine, etc. because he has an incredible psyche. As I said before, abilities are knowledge-based. That's why they are easy to train. And I have a list of abilities in this game. Fighting, markmanship, first aid, journalism, law, engineering, alien technology, and xenobiology. I didn't want to have too many of them. Because if you have too many, then it actually makes the game... My mix difficult to make all of them meaningful, but at the moment, well, there's eight of them, and I think they all combine in meaningful ways. Fightmanship, fighting and win marksmanship get compared to agility. So that means that as I go, as you go through the game, it will be easy for you to hit other people if you're training your your fighting or marksmanship ability. First aid allows you to heal yourself or others. Journalism and law are mostly used in the first. Um, game and genesis and they do things um, related to the environment around you and to some of the side missions engineering and alien technology are very important for um, doing for crafting or operating um, machinery so as i've told you in other videos um the release date for hero villain supercharged dlc should be november the second it's already on Steam, so those of you who use Steam, you can actually subscribe to it. Of course, take this with a pinch of salt because sometimes these um, games can be delayed. But I mean, hopefully it will get released around that day. And that is all I wanted to tell you today. So obviously, if you like my videos, please subscribe and you get more on what I'm doing. Thank you.